welcome to the squirrel tail today I'm going to do a video on polishing the brass hardware for a long rifle now the first thing you need to do is get whatever you're going to polish secured in some manner for a butt plate I put in a wood clamp like this and then just put in a vise a trigger guard I recommend a little simple jig like this or fixture I should say all it is is two boards cut out in this shape with a nut with Y nuts take it out And put in the vise for the side plate super glue it to a board only use a couple drops here and there you want it so it'll stand up to the sanding and buffing but you want it so you can also pry it off now well it's pretty obvious the reason why you want to polish everything is because it looks nice no one wants to look at an ugly gun So now the first thing you want to do is remove any um, sprue marks or any um, big things like this that is left with casting. To do that I will use a hacksaw. I'm gonna, on this particular one, obviously somewhere will be easier and harder. I'm going to make a series of straight down cuts. Gotta get my blade a little more tensioned. And then after I make all those series of cuts, I'm going to take the saw, I'm going to cut along it diagonally, being careful not to dig into the plate. I still want a good bit of the sprue to be left there, maybe an eighth inch or so. I mean, the more you get it down, the better off you are, but you don't want to cut into the butt plate. Cut it off like that. As you can see, it's a lot shorter. And that will be a lot easier than take off. Now there's two ways you can approach this. One is with a good standard bastard file. The other is with a belt sander. I'm probably going to do a little bit of both. Now a bad habit I got into is falling both ways. I've been working to stop doing that. You always want to make one stroke to lift.
Okay, my arms are starting to get tired, so I'm going to start switching over to a belt sander to finish it off. That's a, this is a little Harbor Freight 1x30 belt sander. I think they're like 40 bucks, something like that. Now I took some of the guards off, which I know you're not supposed to do. And I am not liable if you take the guards off and get injured. But that gives me a nice area to remove the rest of that sprue. Now as you can see I have the sprue is gone and I blended in that area with the rest of the butt plate. So then I'll put it back in the vise. And I'll keep I'm now going to draw file it a little bit. That makes a nice, well blended surface. Now, where you start in regards to cleaning up the butt plate will vary depending on the casting. Sometimes when you buy a casting they are really rough. These are some I found at a local junk store for like six bucks a piece. Um, but they need more cleaning up. If you buy some like from Dave Keck they are you might be able to start sand right away with sandpaper on them so it does vary the quality of the casting you know if better casting you're going to have less polish work so now once i get this draw foam i'll look for any other marks and looks like i still have one i have to get out That's the thing when you're doing this, you might be working on it, look at it, be like, oh, there's something that needs to come out. Before you move to sandpaper, any pits, you want to make sure they're filed out. You can see, oh, how well it's showing on the camera. There's a little bit of a pit right there from the castings. Now, sometimes... They're so deep where you either have to pick between living with them or getting a new casting. So this is pretty thick so I think I can definitely get it out. But you know if they're very small it might not be worth actually trying to get them out. You know, especially if it's just like your personal hunting gun. Now one 
thing when you're trying to get out pits is to make sure you're still working it evenly. You don't want to make just file this out and then have a notch there. It's not quite tight enough. Okay, it looks like I got it pretty Next cool. thing I'm going to use is actually a orbital sander. Like this. And I'm going to use a fairly coarse sandpaper. this surface pretty good. Now this surface already looks good so I'm now gonna I'm still gonna hit it with the belt or the orbital sander. As you can see, I pretty much have a good even finish along the surfaces. So now it's on to hand sanding. Now it is on to hand sanding. You want to avoid dropping it. Luck this time I got lucky. But the last thing you want to do is um, create more dings to polish out. The camera line moved a little on me. So now for Hand sanding, I like to make a little kit. You want diff different grits of sandpaper from 150 down to 600. And you want different 
sanding blocks, just wood and dowel, just scraps. Different flexibilities, different thicknesses. So what you want to start, no, and something to note, when you cut your sandpaper up into little pieces like this, if it doesn't have what the grid is on, make sure you write it or you're going to get a bunch of pieces of sandpaper that you don't know what the grid is. So I'll start with 150 grit paper. And that's not quite flexible enough. For doing this surface, I want something that's fairly flexible. Um, so in this case, if it's not flexible enough, I can just quickly carve it a bit. I'll use the other one. I should put this in a vise and do this. That should do the trick. I hope I don't seem too unorthodox. I'm just kind of working and filming and trying to show you guys a little bit. Now that has a nice flex to it so I can flex it around the butt plate. Like I said I'll start with 150. Now when I see in this one I'm going to go from here to here so from this corner to this corner and you'll see why shortly. Now when I do the 220, instead of going this corner, this corner, I'm going to do the opposite and go this corner to this corner. And once I see all the marks are gone, um, going this way, I know I'm ready to move on to the next grip. And you can just roll your paper around to get some fresh grit and do different parts of the sanding pad. And you want to bend it when you're doing a curved surface like this. have a buffer which I do and I'll be showing you that 
you are now ready to buff. Um, you can go to 600, and if you don't have a buffer, then you go 600, 800, and crocus paper. But yeah, and that would be like take you an extra hour. Um, but right now, I'm probably good to start using the buffer. And honestly, depending on the finish, some of you might be happy with that finish there. Um, you know, it's personal preference. In this case, I'm going to buff it. Or it's personal preference, or the preference, if it's for someone else, their preference on it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna move on to buffing. I just have a simple six inch grinder with a buffing wheel. Um I got this brown compound at the local hardware store that's uh, made for brass. Add a little bit to it. catch this isn't too bad but on a thinner butt plate it could potentially cut the buffing wheel so you always want the edge facing down Lightly with your hand get any buffing compound off of it As you can see You have a nice mirror finish Nice shiny butt plate Again sometimes like if you're using it as a hunting gun you might not want this because this could scare stuff away but There you can see it's a beautiful polished butt plate so I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and like I said, I'll normally I'll have done all surfaces, and I'll go back and get this surface looking like this. Um, so thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe for more great content, and check out our Instagram page at at Squirrel Tail Show. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe for more great content, and check out our Instagram page at, at Squirrel Tail Show.